Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the math, math portion of the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. The problem that, that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 151. Page, turn to page 151 and you will find it. This problem number four. Problem number four. By the way, when this, when this question was actually given in the real exam, Half the people had trouble with it. Only 51% of the people got it right. Only 51% of the people got it right. And if you're interested in watching the old videos of mine on the exact same problem, because it's the exact same problem that appears in the old book, the old version of the essay, old, old version of the GRE, which is the which is the book I'm holding in my hand here, practicing to take the GRE general test, the 10th edition which is the old format of the GRE but one of the, one of the things that they have not changed from the old GRE to the revised GRE are the quantitative comparison question, the question that we are about to do where they give you two quantities in the two column and we are simply asked to compare the two quantities that type of question has not been changed so if you are interested in doing more practice on those questions this book here has seven exams each exam has 30 quantitative comparison questions therefore there are 210 quantitative comparison question and I have done every single one of them the, the, the videos are already posted on the YouTube and if you're interested in watching the old one here's the tag just type in GRE math day 19 10th edition And this is the same question that appears on page number 136 of the 10th edition of the, of the page. Here's the question. Column A, column B. X squared Y, we are told, is positive. And X times Y squared, we are told, is negative. Well, here's the solution x squared, the squared of any quantity, doesn't matter what the quantity is, whether it's fraction or positive or negative or anything, for example, if you have negative 3 times negative 3, negative, time, negative, time, negative 3 times negative 3, it's going to be positive 3, a uh, positive 9, because negative times negative is positive. So this quantity, x squared, this x squared is always positive. So something positive something positive times y we are told is positive well if something positive which is what x squared is something positive times y is positive that implies that implies that y must be positive y must be positive which is not the one way of saying that y is more than zero same exact logic will apply there but in the reverse order here y squared is positive y squared is is a positive quantity y squared is a positive quantity because it's squared again something positive times x we are told something positive times x we are told is negative we are told is negative, it is less than zero. But if some positive quantity times some other quantity happens to be negative, that implies that this other quantity, x, must be negative. That's it, we are done. That's it, we are done. Y, whatever it is, we do not know what y is. And we don't need to know what y is. That's why, that's why these questions are called quantitative comparison. We are not asked to compute this thing. We are not asked to 
actually determine the exact value of x, values of x and y. It's enough to say it suffices, it suffices uh, for, uh, for, our, for our purposes that uh, y turns out to be a positive quantity, x turns out to be a negative quantity, therefore the quantity in column A is bigger. That's it. Let's do the next one. That's it, we're done. The next one that I will do is number six. I will skip. I'm skipping number five right now. I'll do that number five in the next in, in tomorrow's video, day 41. Again, this exact same thing appears exact same question appears on page number 127 of the 10th edition of the book and this one 50% 50, 50 of people got it right we are asked to evaluate x times x squared times q or x squared well x squared q is same as x squared times x squared times x squared which is same as x times x times x times x times x times x and so forth. We simply multiply the two exponents. So this is x to the sixth, as you can see there are six of them here. So it's x times x to the sixth over x to the second, which is same as x times x to the sixth is x to the seventh over x squared, which is we have seven x's here, one, and then the pairs. These three pairs. This pair, this pair, this pair, are you three x uh, are you x squared three of them right there over x squared. I'm making too much fuss about it. This drops out, this drops out, and you got two here, two here, one here. Answer is x to the five, x to the fifth. That's it. The answer is D. I will see you tomorrow on day number 41. Okay? I know.